today we're going to take a look at local machine to machine communication using two of these ESP8266 Wi-Fi development boards. One's going to be attached to a motion sensor and the other one will be attached to a light. And when the motion sensor senses motion, the light will come on. It's going to be simple, it's going to be fun. Let's get to it. This is the Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi development board. It is the 12E, the ESP12E module, which some of you may have. This board has a number of peripheral options, including ADC channel, UART, pulse width modulation, some of those, not a whole lot, and also SPY and I2C. Now, I did a previous video on this, kind of a beginner video, and I'll link it in the description below if you're interested. I'd also like to mention that it has an operating voltage of 2.5 volts to 3.6 volts and the input output pins are not 5 volt tolerant so be aware that you can damage your board. You can connect your board to your computer using a micro USB cable and I'll also be using an external power supply through the VIN pin and I'll be running 5 volts to that. I've heard of people running more than 5 volts so I tried 9 volts. <laughs> And the 9 volts does get warm, so be aware of that as well. I think the max is still 5 volts. There are two buttons located next to the USB port, and one's a reset button, one is a flash button. The flash button can uh, download new programs where the uh, reset button will reset the ESP chip. There's also an onboard 2.4 gigahertz antenna. And with that said, I think we can begin. So here are the two ESP8266 development boards that we're going to use. One will be a client and the client will be connected to a motion sensor here. The other will be a, uh, a server and we'll just connect it to an LED. And what we're going to do here is configure this so that the client will send a request to the server and the request that the server receives corresponds to the GPIO2 pin or the output pin of the client, meaning is there motion or is there no motion? Is the pin high or is the pin low? The board on our right here is our server and we can set it up as a web server and give it an access point that allows the client to connect directly to it. And the server will change the status of the LED, whether it's lit or not, based on the request from the client. So if there's motion, the client will say light it up. If there's no motion, the client will say turn it off or keep it off. And the code for the server, we are going to use three libraries. We'll use the ESP8266 Wi-Fi and web server libraries and we'll also use the Wi-Fi client library. You also want to include your, your uh, login for your Wi-Fi and your Wi-Fi password, the SSID and password. And uh, down here we will create a Wi-Fi server and then we'll initialize the serial communication port right here and uh, set the GPIO2 pin as an output and then here we'll use the password and login of our Wi-Fi to create an access point. And down here in the loop, we'll check that the client is connected to the server and it'll read any kind of incoming data from the client. At this point, the server reads the data sent from the client to determine whether the LED is on or off. Then a response is generated to send back to the client and then the communication is disconnected. So let's scroll back up here to the top. We've got our board plugged in. No, we do not. Plug our board in here. And go ahead and load this code onto the board. At this point, we will load the server program onto the board that we're calling our server. Go up here and upload it from here. Now I'm going to click in the top right corner to open the serial monitor and hit the reset button on my board to see what it gives me in the serial monitor. And over at the far right, you should see an IP address. That's the IP address that you want to copy and paste into the code for the client. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now for the program code for the client, we're going to use one library, the ESP8266 Wi-Fi library. You're also going to want to include your SSID and your password to your Wi-Fi. Just a minute ago, we copied an IP address from the serial monitor when we uploaded code to the server board. Now that code that you copied, you're going to put right here under host so that the client knows the IP address and can connect to the access point on the web server. 
Down here in the setup, we'll go ahead and initialize the serial communication, and then we'll go ahead and set up pin 2, or GPIO 2, as the input, and that's a D4 right here on the board. In the loop here, we see that it, there's a 4 second delay before it begins to read the status of the GPIO 2 pin, then it will connect to the server, and down here we'll generate the URL for our GET request, and we'll print that to the serial monitor, and then send the request to the server and check whether the connection has been made. And then right down here you'll see that the reply from the server will be posted to our serial monitor and then the connection will be closed. Remember to paste that IP address from the server right here before we upload the program to the client board. If you're having any issues with your board connecting, as you can see here, it's not connecting, go ahead and disconnect either your voltage in or a ground pin and then it should connect, or at least it did for me. And now it should write the code to my board here, and once that is done, we will click in the top right corner here and open up the serial monitor. So now the client is trying to connect to the access point, but the server's not plugged in, so it keeps failing. So at this point, we're going to connect both of them so they can speak to each other. The one on the left is programmed as a server, the one on the right is programmed as a client. When I make motion in front of the motion sensor, the LED on the left comes on, the server does. And you can see the light uh, comes on so you can tell when the communication begins and when it ends. So it's on now and then when I move my fingers it detects motion, the light goes off, it sends a message to the server, the server turns the light on and communication ends. It does take a little bit of time. It, it is sending and receiving messages wirelessly and this board is not known for its speed. It is not a teensy uh, board by any means, but uh, it's not real slow either. This is the server and all I have connected to it is an LED and a 220 ohm resistor. The resistor is connected on ground and the positive pin of the LED is connected to D4 which is the GPIO2. So I am going to use an external 5 volt power supply to power this. So with this uh, motion sensor you can adjust sensitivity here and then your time delay right here with these two uh, orange potentiometers and then down here you've got uh, three pins and the pin that's closest to your jumper over here that one's going to be your ground so we'll go ahead and plug the ground in plug that in there. Your uh, pin on the far left will be your positive pin. That'll be my 5 volt pin plug that one in there. Then the middle pin is going to be your data pin. And we will plug that in at the same location that we used on the server. So it'll be D4. We are going to power this Wi-Fi board with an external power supply. And it'll be 5 volts regulated. So we'll go ahead and plug this into the VIN, the VIN. And don't forget your ground connection. Plug that into a ground. All right, so that's my connection here. I'm just using a regular uh, breadboard power supply, and I've got it set to five. So here's ground. Then here is my positive. I'm just using this to this little thing right here to hold that down in place. All right, we'll go ahead and power that up. Thank you all very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you again very soon with another video.